Defensive tackles don't often get a lot of praise because they just don't put up the same numbers as edge rushers. And that's a shame because last year we had a relatively good class, but only one defensive tackle was taken in the first round. And let me tell you, this upcoming class has the chance to be special. It's good and it's hefty. So here are my top 10 defensive interiors in the 2025 NFL draft and sit back Hang out till the end of the video because I'm going to talk about some of the guys who just missed the list. But without further ado, let's do the dang thing. Starting at number 10, I got TJ Sanders out of South Carolina coming in at 6'5", 295 pounds. Last year was his first year as kind of a full-time starter. He had seven starts last year and he was, he was a hella good, guys. He was a hella good. This is a dude that moves exceptionally well. He played tight end back in high school and I remember going to the South Carolina tape and watching both him and Tonka Hemingway and Hemingway was solid but like he just didn't move like Sanders he didn't have the power of Sanders like th this guy just hits like a brick despite being that like 295 it's sub 300 but it's not like terrible it's not like we're talking like 285 280 but he plays with real heavy hands great leg drive and the dude's got some stoutness as a run defender. That's what really stood out to me. And the Gamecocks, unlike with Hemingway, they felt they felt free to put Sanders really wherever along the defensive alignment. Like he lined up at like four tech, five tech. He lined up at nose tackle in some cases. And he was exceptionally productive. He plays with really good leverage despite being 6'5". You look at 6'5", and you're like, yeah, this guy's probably going to have trouble sinking, but not him. He plays with a relatively low pad level and just kind of really helps him generate that power at the point of attack. It also helps him maintain that anchor in the run game. But the suddenness, the suddenness when he sets up his pass rush moves, because I, admittedly his first step, it, he's not all that explos explosive. I think it's relatively okay. But man, dude, the shimmy, the shake, just before having to initiate contact with the blocker, he's already putting these guys on ice, getting them off tilt, off balance. I like that. The movement skills, the big motor, it, it was all really good for him last season. And big reason why I have him higher on this list than his teammate Hemingway, who in his own right was very productive, is, well, the run game, man. Well, power and the run game. Like, he was very solid versus the run. Now, he is a bit tad undersized, but he at 6'5", he's got the type of frame to be able to fill out and add some extra weight. And yes, he's not the most explosive guy. And it, it was pretty, pretty hotly contested for this 10th spot. I'll go over some of the guys who just missed it at the end, but go ahead. Let's keep this sucker rolling. With number nine, Shamar Turner out of Texas A&M. I do list him as an edge, but he's 6'4", 290. And I mean, he was used a lot around that like four five, even in some cases outside of the tackle, but four five tech. And I, I think I've already kind of labeled him as like, okay, he might be like a Darius Robinson-esque prospect in this class. Like he does a really good job of turning speed into power and he showcases a very good first step. He combines that with very powerful hands. He creates a good bull rush and he really stems a lot of counters off that bull rush. He also plays with very violent hands, does a good job just keeping his hands active and just being a nuisance throughout the entire pass rush rep. With that, he's aided by uh, just good length, good suddenness to just keep offensive linemen off tilt. And versus top body type. I mean, essentially, he's been playing the DeMarvin Leal role uh, for Jimbo Fisher, who no longer there. So it's going to be interesting to see what he ends up being asked to do here. I'm kind of curious with Elko if they end up, if he ends up playing more of like a, uh, if you're familiar with Duke Pebbles type of role, and then leave like the power aspect to, someone else there on the roster where you have like Dwayne Carter there was like more of this uh power penetrator you had Pebbles who was uh or Peebles I can't remember how to say it I'll talk about him at the end but he, he where they lined him up a lot of places but they really chose to take advantage of his quicks his twitch and whatnot 
but plays with a nice motor. The thing is, just very inconsistent against the run, something I uh, you just really noticed because I watched both him and Walter Nolan at the same time since they're on the same team. And you could definitely tell like the, the power aspect, their ability to hold up uh, was a lot different and Turner just kind of felt like a non-factor. I didn't see the patience to set the edge. I didn't see great ability to stack and shed in the run game. Uh, if a ball carrier was coming his way, then he, he might have been lucky to be able to get, get off of blocks just because of uh, the angle the ball carrier was taken. Like, he's far better, I think, uh, as a, a penetrator or maybe coming in and attacking, like, uh, the backside of runs. Uh, will occasionally play with a high pad level, just consistently doesn't do a great job getting get in low and stay in low get in that uh get in and establish in leverage and then maintaining leverage like oftentimes it's just too easy to uh for for blockers to get up under his pads he's going to be a very interesting valuation because it, i'm not going to act like he wasn't super productive like you you look at his true pass rush win rate which is just rated on one-on-one -on -one opportunities 25 percent. that's a hell of a big number but then that dips down to 13.3% on your just every down pass rush uh, reps. And that's not that's not a bad number either. It's, I think it's among the better in this class. It's just he, does, he doesn't seem like the guy you're going to want to kick inside. That's kind of why I threw Darius Robinson out there as a potential uh, disclaimer or comp. At number eight, I have a Dante Corleone, the godfather himself over there for the Bearcats coming in at 6-1. 320 pounds and the dude was good last year he was a second team all big 12 started all 12 games but really put himself on the map the year prior in 2022 where he only had one start but he was uber productive now we're, we're talking about a bowling bowl type of build he is stout nice low center of gravity plays with good natural leverage and he's able to generate a lot of power with his lower body he can just continue to drive those legs because i don't care i love leg drive regardless of position i think if you're able to keep your feet moving through contact that's something that just kind of it's kind of necessary for any position for the most part unless we're talking about like quarterback or hunter kicker but he does a really good job of that, and he's he is able to beat double teams with the with that drive, with that grind. A uh, very quick get off for a guy at 320 pounds. He's able to penetrate the gaps and just force ball carriers to the outside or even into the backs of his blockers. Now, very good run defender. Very good in run defense. He is very disciplined. He will not leave his assignment. He can clog the middle, and he has shown uh, just an excellent ability to wrap up. You look at uh, la or 2022, 4.3 missed tackle rate. You look at last season, 6.3% missed tackle rate. He was very active as a run defender. I like that quite a bit. Will sometimes be bowl in a china shop-esque where he just plays a little bit off tilt, out of control, playing in front of himself. Uh, he... he Feels like he might have a lack of length because you do see him reaching quite a bit at the point of attack. Also, not like the most sudden or twitched up guy at 320 pounds. Who would have thought, right? But I would like to see a little bit more violence, at least from him when he gets stuck in engagement. Like uh, he does, the dude doesn't have the pursuit speed to follow ball carriers or quarterbacks break in the pocket. But but if you get violent, then I mean, you, you you could get to those players before they even make that move to outside the hashes. Now I I, uh, I am kind of worried about his ability to disengage. He feels more like a penetrator than someone that's actually going to win like one on one, because you, you go look at his true pass rush win rate four point one percent. It's pretty awful. But you look at his pass rush win rate throughout the whole course of the season. 9.2 he does a better job of shooting gaps than actually just kind of enforcing his will on blockers on the down to down basis a lot of people really do like corleone i don't know why i have such a difficulty saying that name but i do but a lot of people do like this cat 
I'm kind of reeling back. I do want to see a little bit more. I want to see a little bit more of a bump, especially as a pass rusher this season. But I, I think he does enough for me in the run game. He's just got that, that nose tackle size. And I mean, shoot, almost 400 snaps he spent in uh, the A gap or around the A gap, uh, around the zero tech. So I, I like that quite a bit when it comes to the Godfather. At number seven, I have Riley Mills out of Notre Dame coming in at 6'5", 297 pounds. And someone I was actually a big fan of if he would have came out in the 2024 NFL draft. He ends up returning because Notre Dame, they're looking to compete for a natty next year. Brought in a lot of talent via the transfer portal. They had also had a lot of talent uh, decide to stay there like Howard Cross and such. So, but when it comes to like Mills, I feel like he's already like... He's a very high floor player. Uh, I really do. This is a cat that has essentially been a starter the last uh, two seasons. And he's got a nice, a nice long, strong build. Despite being that sub 300, he does have the frame to add more weight. But he's just naturally strong, man. He's sturdy at the point of attack. He keeps his gap assignment. He uses very powerful, very violent hands to shed blocks. I like the lateral uh, ability. I like the movement skills. I like the uh, the, the anchor. He, he just displays the ability to be able to clog lanes. And he's tough to uproot once he does decide to drop that anchor. Plays with a low pad level despite his height. So that's that's very important to me. Non-stop motor and again has the frame to put on more mass i'm not too worried about him being sub 300 and i mean really the lower percentile is like 290 or less uh but big, big fan big fan of mills uh he will be 24 at the beginning of his rookie year so he's i think actually the oldest player uh, on my top 10 here and he just kind of lacks like the quicks and the get off skill like He's still putting it all together as a pass rusher, yet I felt like he won a lot last season just because of just how much he grinds and wears and tears down blockers just with that length, with that strength. Had a 24.7% pass rush, true pass rush win rate, and then that went down to 15.1%, which is still in the higher percentile. So you do like that. I would like to see him expand his pass rush toolbox, but... You're dealing with a guy that's going to be a very good run defender at the bare minimum who, despite not being completely put together as a pass rusher, has had a lot of success rushing the passer. So I do like that about Mills. Again, high floor guy, though the ceiling, I'm not going to say the ceiling's low with him, but he is an older prospect. At number six, I got Alfred Collins out of Texas coming in at six foot five, 321 pounds. That's right. Another impressive ability here. And he was kind of stuck. He's been stuck behind really good players for the last few seasons because he only had one start his true freshman year in 2020. He had four starts in 2021, another one start in 2022, and then six starts last season. He's been stuck behind guys like Moro, uh, Ojamo Moro, and uh, uh, you got uh, Coburn, you got last year, Devondre Sweat, and uh, Byron Murphy. So now it feels like he's gonna have his time to shine, and he really should. He's a former five-star recruit. Like, the tools are there. He is long, he is powerful. Like, he is on the taller side with a really good wingspan, Pretty muscular, has room to add more weight on his frame if you really need him to. However, he's not lacking strength. Like, he has been pretty sturdy, plays with good balance, and really received a lot of, uh, when you go back and watch the tape, when teams were, were able to get to, like, the red zone or the goal line, he would actually be in uh, uh, more times than, like, a Byron Murphy, or at least I noticed that in the... Uh, like four or five games that I watched uh, for Collins. But the dude's a very stout run defender. He's hard to move, does a good job of just eating double teams, keeps gap integrity remaining in his assignment until it's time to stack and shed and make a play on the ball carrier. He's displayed a nice spin move 
when being stuck on those double teams and just always is spinning back towards where the ball carrier is going. He's got a good little shimmy as a pass rusher. He was very successful as a pass rusher last year. 22.2% true pass rush win rate. That drops to 13%, which is still a very good number. Plays with active hands, big motor. He's got uh, alignment versatility just because at that size, it's kind of ludicrous. However, technically speaking, there's a lot of things that he needs to kind of iron out his game. And I mean, technically, he's he is a fifth year player. So you're kind of hoping some of those things would already be worked out. Like he plays with this false step. If you're familiar with that. It's like instead of like bursting off your plant foot, you kind of like step into it. It's just wasted movement and it, it takes away milliseconds from uh, you being able to reach the point of attack and take control. So there's that uh, leverage, 6'5". I get it. Leverage is going to be a problem with him. Kind of is what it is. Is a uh, pass rush toolbox. Like, the makings of a productive pass rusher are all there. But most of his toolbox really just stems from, like, a bull rush and his swim move. And it's, dude, this swim move is, like, borderline across shop. Like, it, it, it's almost there. And, like, probably the most deadly move on the interior of the def defensive line is a cross chop. Uh, his tackling technique, woof, 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 woof. Last season, 22.2% miss tackle rate. I don't like that. He was able to like reach and tear down ball carriers. However, sometimes he likes to leave his feet before actually initiating contact with ball carriers. Kind of kind of feels like he's got Crisco on his arm. Some guys like legitimately just like slipped from his grips just like whoop but dude collins is like dude, dude's kind of legit i think he's someone that could probably push to be uh much higher maybe a top 50 uh borderline maybe first rounder there's i mean dude this is a good class if obviously if guys gonna take that big jump next season let's go ahead let's talk about the top five and at number five, I have Talik Williams out of Ohio State coming in at six foot three, 327 pounds. He's listed at 327 on Ohio State's website when it comes to their spring uh, spring practices. That was his recorded weight. I've seen other places list him at 290. I guess we'll find out. He he looked he looked pretty solid. He didn't look like 327 on last year's film. But he didn't look sub 300. I'll just say that. But regardless, he was a full-time starter last season. Was a second team All Big Ten. The the Buckeyes. They're another team that's going to be trying to push for a national championship next year. So they had a lot of guys, a lot of guys return. But what I like about Talik Williams here is my first uh, player here with a second round grade. Is he's got a big body in terms of the length. But he plays with really light feet. Like he's big, but surprisingly light footed. Moves around the line of scrimmage pretty darn well for a cat his size. And that quick feet just kind of allows him to stay upright when in engagement. Like someone that won't stop moving his feet when once he engages with blockers. I like that. Plays with good leverage, good power. Uh, he's, he's able to really just pack a punch and push blockers right into the laps of the quarterbacks with just pure leg drive sturdy anchor a guy that's hardly ever really moved off his spot really showed a strong core never getting bent back or waist bending is the term you'd want to uh you would say and he's a very disciplined run defender and he does a really good job of working off double teams so there's a lot to really like about williams and i'm not going to be shocked if you see him at like the back end of some first round mocks uh or if you see him like in a top 50 i think he might end up in my top 50 again i'm going like position by position and i'm just kind of slapping grades on it so by the end of the day man he might end up in my top 50 but he does lack some explosiveness like i think the get off was all that great he just kind of like takes too long to set up his first move uh his pursuit speeds relatively average and i don't like that there's no violence in his play or his in his hands like there are there are times where he is just neutralized uh, in the run game by like cut blocks and he just feels like he could do more with his hands and just isn't violent enough to 
violent enough or the hands aren't active enough to continuously disengage. He just kind of sometimes struggles with disengagement. But man, big, big fan of Talik Williams. I think he's got a uh, pretty versatile body type. I went ahead and listed him as a run stuffing interior because the pass rush uh at least the production has to come together as a pass rusher though by no means uh, are are they bad numbers they're just not high percentile numbers like we're talking like a 7.8 percent pass rush win rate uh 10.8 percent true pass rush win rate so not like very gaudy numbers and number four i got walter nolan out of mississippi formerly of texas a&m coming in at 6'4 290 he was essentially a full-time star started 10 games last season did opt out of the bowl game because he decided to transfer now he's there at old miss and this is a dude just scratching just scratching the service if he takes a significant jump because the dude's a former five-star prospect then probably talking about a potential first rounder because he's got a well-built frame like he's very muscular and he could definitely add more pounds to that weight he's just barrel chested and possesses good full body uh body strength uh his hands are strong they're violent like he, he literally has like a, a haymaker lock and loaded in the chamber and he can set that off at any minute to just ruin the day of a blocker plays with very heavy and very active hands his overall athleticism i wouldn't say it's elite but it's pretty darn good it really is. He's got a pretty good first step. He turns speed into power uh, very well, and that just manifests itself into a lot of power at the uh, point of attack. And he actually plays with quite a bit of power. Like he, he looked so much better as a run defender than Shamar Turner did when I turned on the film. And when it comes to Nolan, plays with a lot of fight, man. He can he can be moved off his spot. But he's never washed out of the run game and will grind his way back towards the play. And he's able to reach and tear down ball carriers. Uh, he's got alignment versatility. Like the, He lined up a multitude of different spots for the Aggies. I don't really see that necessarily changing with the Rebels next season. But I do think his most effective uh, position is probably a three-tech. Now, let's talk about some of the bad. Uh, contact balance. Nolan was on the ground a lot. Whenever, like, it didn't matter. Like, I saw some cases where he was tripped up, where I'd have to go back. We're like, okay, what happened there? How'd he get to the ground? There were there were cases where he was just kind of, like, shoved on um, maybe, like, pool blockers or uh, the guy he was initially uh, initiating contact with was a combo block, so he didn't see the next guy coming. Uh, there were other times where, you know what? Just... Just stepped on a on a blocker's foot and went tumbling down. Saw that in the old Miss game. I was like, what the hell happened there? But he was on the ground quite a bit. And fun fact, you can't get to the quarterback if your face is in the dirt. So, I mean, a, a lot with his eval here is projection. I mean, that's going to be <laughs> kind of the name of the game here in the summer, projection. And what you anticipate seeing... Uh, next season will they take that next step uh how much uh how, how close are they to their ceiling stuff like that but uh d does need a polish up on, on some of the techniques so like they're they're like some of his techniques like there, there's uh like he, he has shown a variety of pass rush moves but like his pass rush plan his hand placement uh he just kind of still leaves a bit to be desired but again this is a dude who's a true junior has shown a lot of potential, and I'm expecting a lot of production next year there now with Ole Miss. At number three is my first first-round prospect in Kenneth Grant out of Michigan, coming in at six foot three, 339 pounds. I absolutely love this cat. I fell in love immediately. I was watching, uh, and th this was last year. I was watching the Penn State. I think it was Penn State, Michigan. It was, and where he essentially just chased down the running back 30 yards down the field. Like, holy moly, you're moving like that at 330, 340? Sign me up. He was a former four-star recruit. 
He, he was a cat that played offensive guard, played defensive line in high school. He was LA Times football player of the year. He even returned a fumble 50 yards for a touchdown in high school. Came away with eight blocked kicks, whether it was PATs or field goals or punts. So, holy moly i i, I kind of like that i kind of like that made second team all big 10 last year now gets a chance to probably be the full-time starter but the big boy can move and that that is probably one of the biggest things i like about him man he can scoop but he is also a strong as a brick he is strong like ox strong like gorilla he, he's just got a lot of power in that frame, he can anchor. He can put you on your butt with the jab. He can push you into the pocket. He can redirect blocks. He, he can survive double teams. He he packs a lot of strength in his build. Plays with very active hands as well. And again, already talked about how those hands, they got some pop behind them. But he has displayed secondary moves as a pass rusher when his initial rush is stonewalled. And his hands just kind of remain active during engagement. And each jab just kind of looks like a brick through a car windshield. It, it can be that devastating. He's very effective at stacking and shedding. And surprisingly, surprisingly, I threw a B in there. Surprisingly, very flexible as well. Like he's got good bursts, but he is way more twitchier and bendier than you would expect. Like his ability to penetrate at three tech or turn the corner on stunts is a fiend to behold it is quite good now i will say i'm not sold on his length man like often he ends up bear hugging blockers and i assume they're just kind of like i assume that they're able to get into his pads because of a lack of length however he does a good job of freeing himself from uh contact also versus double teams he's able to hold his ground and sustain against double teams but it isn't like he's defeating him, which is honestly fine. Like being able to hold your ground is honestly more than enough. But I'm a big fan of Kenneth Grant, another guy that I'm looking with uh, with more playing time is going to take that that jump. And again, I mean, there's just not a lot of like there's so many guys with really good size, like really good weight. And we we saw in this past draft. Like there, there were a couple of guys that essentially you could have qualified as reaches simply because they had size on the interior. At number two, I got Dion Walker out of Kentucky <laughs> coming at six foot six, 348 pounds. That's right. I said this class got some size. Here's some more size. I got a top 20 grade on him. He was a former four star recruit out of the 2022 class. He uh, actually started 11 games as a freshman, was an all-SEC freshman, uh, made the all-SEC freshman team. And then he started all 12 games last season, was a first-team all-SEC, and by the way, was a captain already as a sophomore. Kind of wild, kind of wild, but very productive. As you can see, 51 pressures, 8 sacks, 29 defensive stops, very active in the run game as well. The dude is just a massive human being. He's just big. He looks big on film, too. You didn't have to know what number he was going into his film. Just look for the big blue dot. It's essentially what it was. And he's overwhelmingly powerful. Like, he plays with very heavy hands, and he uses them very aggressively. He will knock blockers back with initial strikes, and he can run them right into the laps of the quarterback. He does a good job of clearing uh, his pads as well when defenders or blockers are able to get uh, inside. He... he just comes down on him with these big, heavy meat hooks. Very light on his feet for being 6'6", 348 pounds. Yeah, light on his feet. Like, his first step is, is pretty solid. He can change direction shockingly, just smoothly. And he allowed, and like, it, this allowed Kentucky to really move him all, all over the defensive alignment where uh, he spent most of his snaps actually at three tech or... Uh, or inside tech so you like that deadly chop move like i'm a sucker for a good chop move and he's got a good one he swings his arm around like a massive wrecking ball and it just devastates the blockers man and he honestly he's more put together as a pass rusher than you'd expect or at least where he gets credit for 
Uh, some of the things, being 6'6", fun fact, yeah, he struggles with leverage. Who would have thought? It's not surprising. He, he struggles to keep uh, his pads low. And, I mean, it does feel like he basically just stands up the minute the snap is uh, called. So, at his size, it's just going to be something you're going to have to deal with. That he, He's someone that's not going to always get or maintain leverage. Also, power and anchor versus the run, which was a little shocking to me. Like, he doesn't bring the same type of power when he's static and having to, like, hold his spot than it is when he's attacking and going after it as a pass rusher. Like, he can be moved from his assignment. There are some times where, like, there are some times, like, without... He, he's just kind of dead in the water against double teams. Like, I've seen, like... And it's not just that. I've seen large blocking tight ends be able to keep him stuck in engagement. You go beat the hell out of that big blocking tight end, man. Come on. Come on. And at number one, if you saw the thumbnail, should have been easy to narrow it down, but it's Mason Graham out of Michigan coming in six foot three, 318 pounds. I got a top five grade on him. Uh, he was a former four-star recruit out of the 2022 class. That's just wild that him and Kenneth Grant were in the same class uh, for Michigan. But wrestled in high school, was a two-time Trinity League heavyweight champion and that's going to play into some of the stuff we're going to talk about but last season was his first year as kind of the full-time starter made first team all big 10 was very productive 29 pressures four sacks 16.4 percent pass rush win rate jumps up to 26 percent is a uh like in those one-on-ones true pass rush win rate now, his ability to penetrate is like so freaking good. He is unbelievably quick. And he will he will win just with his first step. He is light-footed and possesses just a scary first step. However, he gets good leverage. He plays with really, really good hands, really active hands. And I mean, I know it's a little cliche, but like oh it must be the wrestling background. That's why he's so good with his hands, why he can be a mauler. And he can win like that, but kind of kind of feels like the case when you watch this film. It really does. He's got a very versatile body type. He has just good size there at 318. And realistically, he could probably play anywhere along the defensive line. Like he has the strength and the power and the anchor to play nose. Or he could straight up, guys. He, he could probably kick outside for you. And went with that quick twitch ability. But I'm not saying this is an edge rusher. I'm not. I'm just saying you could really use him wherever you want along the defensive alignment. Uh, just kind of use him as that chess piece. Plays with a big motor. He'll play through to and through of the whistle. You love the pursuit speed. Uh, if I'm going to critique, again, this is kind of nitpicking when it comes to him. Because straight up, guys, top five prospect on the interior. Kind of in love with him. But does... Uh, Feels like he's a bit wider in his stance than the average interior player. And if he were just to like bring the feet in a little bit, he could probably be a, even more explosive, which is kind of wild. But it, I don't know, man. Sometimes when he, when he goes to set up before the play, it kind of feels like he's doing the splits. I don't know why. That's the, that's the mental image that I got. Uh, I would also like to see him maybe add a few more pass rush moves. Like the dude has a lot of counters and secondary moves. But I just kind of want to see him add more quiver or arrows to his quiver. But again, nitpicking at this point. I think he has the chance to be one special of a talent. But let's talk about some of these guys who just missed out on the list. Because I did say that 10 spot for me was hotly contested. And I got Bear Alexander out of USC. And I have Joshua Farmer out of Florida State as the guys who were, were also in contention for that that 10 spot as these it, it's kind of it's kind of interesting both these guys have the potential they have the tools to really take a big step up and uh, i just want to see a little bit more consistency for like bear alexander i don't feel like he's got that like mean streak and I, I i don't know i didn't see a lot of physicality or like violence when it comes to his hands on film and like 
it did feel like he wanted to be more of a finesse type of guy, which I found interesting. And then with with uh, Farmer, a dude with, that has all the tools, but uh, needs a lot of technical refinement, made strides last season. But let's see if he could take that next step this year. I know a lot of people are going to be wondering, where's Howard Cross the third? Well, I got, I got, I got, I got him. I got, uh, was it Aeneas P uh, Peebles? Who was formerly at Duke, now at Virginia Tech. But those are two guys that are, they're undersized interior players. And they're going to be 24 at the beginning of their rookie year. So I might just not be as high on those guys than maybe some, some of the consensus out there. I know a lot of people really love Howard Cross. The guy was very dominant. Uh, or at least his numbers would suggest that. However, the pass rush win rate honestly wasn't like all that crazy. But he was very good run stuffer. And then with uh, Peebles, it's just for me, man, his tools are tapped out. He can get washed out in the run game. If anything, I like Cross better in the run game than Peebles. But, yeah, I do want to give uh, a couple of shout-outs to the guys that I didn't get to, or at least I'm going to get to late. Uh, like, let's just talk about the FCS guys, right? You got Joey Slackman from uh, Florida. Well, initially from Penn, right? Pennsylvania. Now he's going to be at Florida. Uh, I'll go search for some pen tape i don't know if i'll be able to find it uh though with thor griffin who's at louisville formerly of harvard i have watched a little bit of him in the past and apparently at spring training camp or spring camp spring practice whatever the hell you want to call it he was up to 320 so i'm like yo yo let, let's, uh, i can't wait to take a look at that but uh let me know what you think in the comment section below who are some of your favorite interior players in this class and if you want a if, shoot if you want to know some of the quarterbacks in this class i already did that video you can check that sucker out down here but as always until next time be easy my friends later